Hello and welcome to another episode of Best in UC TV. I'm your host, Heather Clancy. And with me today is Amy Murphy. She's the owner of Total Technologies in Houston. You know, the thing that Amy and I were talking about before uh, we came on air here was, you know, what makes an IP telephony project succeed? We always hear about the projects that fail. Well, how you want to know how to be successful. So I've asked Amy to spend some time with us today discussing the issues that, that make that happen. Amy, thank you very much for your time. Welcome. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. And I appreciate you coming all the way from hot Houston on our video conference here like with Life Size. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we as journalists, you know, journalists tend to obsess on the failures, but I like hearing about successes. And one of the things that you mentioned to me as we were discussing this topic was that it starts with the evaluation. When you're looking at a unified communication solution, it really starts with the questions you ask in the evalu evaluation process. So from your experiences as an integrator, tell me what the sorts of questions are that you like hearing or that you guide your customers to ask. Well, I think to begin with, it's who is attending an evaluation or a demo of the product. Mm -hmm. That is vital to the success of the overall implementation, the decision-making process. So it's important to have, of course, the decision makers sure. um, in sure. attendance. It's also important to have whoever's going to manage the system, and most of the time that's the IT director or IT staff. Mm -hmm. But then what a lot of people don't think about is ultimately it's the end users that are using the system and there are varying uh, degrees of responsibilities in a company and different departments. So it's also very important to have uh, the operator or the receptionist hmm. there, um, a sales manager, um, even, even the warehouse person. And sure. the reason for this is it's different perspective. You know, the operator, for example, is going to have certain functionality that she's looking for uh, when she's using the phone system. She is the, you know, the, the first impression from an outside caller. Mm -hmm. So what she wants and what her comfort level is and, and what she wants to see in a phone system may be entirely different from the CEO or the sales manager. So having some representation from uh, different departments that are vital to the company is important uh, when you are evaluating a voice over IP solution. So now that, that's, that sounds like the actual evaluation process, like where you actually have the technology in, actually, let me step back here. Is that for the initial presentation? I mean, even, even the first time a company comes in and, and, and is look and deciding to look at this? Or, you know, would you kind of do a, um, maybe an almost like re internal request for proposals with your organization to get the input and then kind of put it out? Is, is that what you mean? Or is this the evaluation process itself, the actual test? Or both? Well, the, the evaluation is the actual demo. Mm -hmm. Now before, mm -hmm. and that's where the decision making is really going to happen. Sure. Because prior to the evaluation, you want to do the discovery. And usually, at least in, in our case and in my experience, it is either a face-to-face -face meeting, which is mm -hmm. preferable, mm -hmm. with um, the CEO or the, the actual decision maker, sure. where you're really trying to understand what their business is so that you can tailor your, your demo um, for the potential buyer. You okay. need to understand the business. So there's a little bit of the behind-the-scenes part of it, and that, again, is what I call the discovery. Um, and then doing the evaluation um, or the demo um, mm -hmm. is is the most important piece of it. Okay. When someone's te when it, when a business is actually testing, like I, I would assume that most of them have some kind of pilot right in place before they they actually decide to to push the yes on the on that credit card uh, transaction or whatever. However, they're buying it, sign the purchase order. How long do you typically advise someone? to try out this kind of a technology? Um, and, and again, do you have all of those people you mentioned before involved in that test? No. Um, first of all, pilots are usually done with larger companies mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are really looking to make a substantial investment. Sure. Um, so, and the voice over IP phone system is great for small, medium, and large enterprise businesses. So, we're talking about a, a certain percentage of mm -hmm. these potential buyers. To really do a proper evaluation, it's 
30 to 60 days, generally 60 days. And it's the IT staff that is pretty much doing the evaluation. They are the people, because Voice over IP is a data application, so they are generally the people that are going to be managing the system. So they want to get all the technical side of it, and then if there are any problems um, when, they're, when they're doing the evaluation or doing the pilot, um, you know, they will call our support team or, you know, the support team of the manufacturer, however it's set up. Um, so to answer your question, generally enterprise type customers will do the pilot and the length of the pilot is about 60 days. Okay, so step one is to get the right people involved and then actually to really do the meaningful evaluation. Step two is I think um, we've discovered that many businesses really haven't sussed out all the costs associated with, with these solutions. They haven't really looked at the, the investment, what they're offsetting, what they may be picking up, and so forth. So what cost considerations should a business um, include in part, of their, in the part of the evaluation process? What should they really be asking about? What should they look at? I'm so glad you asked that question because this, this is so important. The traditional buying criteria Mm -hmm. uh, for companies was, what's the bottom line? What's the purchase price? And you right. hand them the quote after the evaluation is done, and hopefully everything is line itemed out so they have a comfort level that things aren't, there aren't any hidden charges. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Today, business owners have shifted that purchase price criteria a little bit. And now it is known as, what is the total cost of ownership? And to be specific, what I've done a lot of times is I show a picture, and on the picture is um, this beautiful ocean with uh, the iceberg on top. And I'll show the picture to the decision makers, and I will say, when you look at this picture, is there a particular movie that comes to mind? And nine out of 10 times, they get the answer correct, which means I have to find a harder picture, but um, the answer is the Titanic. And I said, what you see in this picture is not what sunk the Titanic. What sunk the Titanic was everything that lay beneath the surface. And specifically, beneath the surface are things like, what, does, um, what do upgrades look like as far as cost goes? What about Mac work? And in the industry, that's moves, ads, and changes. What is that going to cost me? I've got three or four different locations. What is a multi-site upgrade going to look like? How much is a truck roll? All these kinds of things have to be considered along with the basic purchase price that they start out with. So that all equates to what is the total cost of ownership? What is it going to cost me today? What is the system going to cost me next year, and what is the system going to cost me 10 years from now? Mm -hmm. So those are the types of questions on the MAC word and the, the, the service level agreements and the upgrades and new releases and those kinds of things, you know, that um, business owners or decision makers need to ask the vendors to help determine what that total cost of ownership is going to be. Now, if they're migrating from a legacy system to a new system, a unified IP, uh -huh. whatever, they would need to look at them for both of the, the scenarios, correct? I mean, look at their old correct. system and, and try to and try to map the, the costs for that old system into the new world. Right, and you also have to consider, you know, is this an apples to apples? If they're going from a traditional system um, to a voice over IP system, there are different costs associated with each. You know, the voice over IP, as I mentioned earlier, is really a data application. So you'll have licensing types of... Um, costs where you wouldn't have had that on the traditional. But the traditional, you might also have truck rolls where, you know, you can't just point, click, drag and drop and make a change. You have to have a vendor come out. So, you know, it's not always apples to apples, but there's still different costs associated. And yes, you need to look at both of those. Okay. So first step is you get the right people to tell you what you need. Second is you ask the right questions about the money. The third thing is once the solution's in place, how do you get buy-in from your organization? Um, you know, how important is the whole notion of training and, and user adoption in an IP unified communication solution? Training is absolutely paramount to the success of the implementation and the overall customer satisfaction rating. 
And I think it's really important to let potential, potential buyers realize that they can ask questions with regard to training, where in the old world, it used to be, okay, you're gonna have two to four hours of admin training and four to maybe eight hours of end user training. And here's the manual and good luck. In today's <laughs> world, and, and what I think um, really sets the tone for great customer satisfaction is giving uh, potential buyers flexibility with regard to the training. It's not okay you get the four hours of admin training or the up to eight hours of end user training. It's how much training do you need? What would make your employees comfortable? And types of training, different types of training should be offered instead of just, okay, we're gonna train the IT manager. It's, well, we can train the trainer type of training. We can do classroom training. We can do one-on-one, -on -one. whatever your comfort level for your employees is, that's what vendors should offer today. And that's what really separates uh, from the traditional way of, of doing training. When you have your end users and all the employees in the company working with the system that they're comfortable with because we've spent time training them, they're gonna be happy, the IT person is going to be happy, the C-levels are going to be happy, and it's just gonna be a great experience. So a lot of time and a lot of devotion has to be put toward the training aspect of it. Okay, and I'm going to ask the question, I'm gonna pretend I'm the kind of uh, business that has the sorts of users that go back again and again and again with questions. How important is it that be the, the training be ongoing or that there be some kind of knowledge base that, that my business can access in terms of, of the, uh, the, the user information on it. Plus, P.S., I hire new people all the time. How do right. I deal with Excellent that? Excellent question. Excellent. Um, very important. What, what I would suggest is after the initial training, um, you also want to uh, leave some training materials that, that they can go back and look at. Um, offering a tutorial that they could do online so that as you hire new people or uh, people you know change positions they can log on to the tutorial and always have that mm -hmm. and then also every vendor should put a training program together to offer subsequent on-site training if that's what um, the customer you know really wants to have so I should be able to ask for that and get it from whoever I've, I've invested with as a Definitely customer. ask. Mm -hmm. Always, I would always, <laughs> always ask. Right. Right. Okay. And so then, again, and then have the tutorial, and mm -hmm. you know, and have um, some training documents available. Now, the training documents, when you have the hard paper, that you know, that can't change as easily as something online. Having yeah. that online documentation um, is important because that's easier to update. And that's where most people live anyway now at the office. Right. Amy, any last tips for me? Again, pretend I'm the buyer. I want to be successful. Any last tips for me as I go on my IP telephony uh, hunt for the best thing for my business? Yes. I think just as important as the voice over IP system solution, mm -hmm. it's the vendor partner that you choose. Okay. You can have the best solution in the world, the most unbelievable phone system will do everything you want the phone system to do but if you do not have the right company to implement it to train the end users the employees and to continue to support you on it it can be a disaster so even during the evaluation um, or, or the demo as we like to call it there should be sufficient time allotted to let you be comfortable with who the company is, the services that they provide, the type of company. That's just as important as the actual solution that you may end up with. So I would always keep that in mind. Fair enough. Well, Amy, thanks for your time today. Thank you. I enjoyed talking with you. And thank you for joining another episode of Best in UC TV. Until we meet again, I'm your host, Heather Clancy.